Welcome to the Believe Podcast Network, SoCal Sweat. My name is Ann McDaniels, a former NFL cheerleader and product manager turned actress and model who dreams of being a UFC fighter. Meow. Learning strategies to help motivate others leads me to bring you interviews each week from a range of athletes, experts in fitness and nutrition, and so much more. Thanks for listening to Believe, the number one podcast for working professionals, and let's push our endorphins to higher performance through SoCal Sweat. This is your host, Ann McDaniels, and welcome to another episode of SoCal Sweat. Now, for this podcast, so speak, I thought it would be really great to do um, an eating healthy, you know, holiday swaps, how to keep track of your workouts during the holidays. But you know, I just didn't find that to be nearly as important as acknowledging how we might all be feeling during this holiday season. And this podcast really embraces mental health as well. And what a better time to to talk about it and kind of check in because this is a very powerful week of a lot of emotion because we're heading into, well, we're we're two days from Christmas and then going into New Year's Eve, you know, the following week. And yes, again, we could talk about all the holiday meals and swaps, but I think it's more important to focus on mental mental health this year and ways we can kind of navigate with the stress of the holidays, the beauty of the romanticizing of the holidays with all its music and glory and sparkle, and then just how we can get through it and manage expectations and things like that. Now, I believe that we've done our very best we can with the insanity and intensity that has been 2020. I I mean, do you remember last year we had, we literally had New Year's Eve parties that was that were kind of like vintage and great Gatsby themes, like the Roaring Twenties, bringing back the Roaring Twenties. It's going to be amazing. And everybody had speakeasy themes. And I mean, I myself was, I was performing in Vegas as a showgirl for a big event that was sort of a Gatsby themed event. And it was very fancy. And all of a sudden, you know, everything pretty much turned on a dime very, very quickly. I mean, maybe the 20s Prohibition era knew something about history repeating itself today in this commercial realm of 2020. Now, looking at our world today in general, some of the biggest issues are climate crisis and clean energy, education, environmental sustainability, global public health, human rights, marine and wildlife conservation, and food insecurities. Allowing us to focus in on 2020 in the United States, Oh, how about voting rights, climate justice, health care, refugee crisis, racial injustice, income gap, gun violence, equality, and food insecurity again. The global pandemic, not to mention everything on our own soil, has been a monsoon on steroids. Let's just throw in the sparkles of magic from the holiday season. This monster of joy adds the stress of traveling, potential losses of loved ones, bipartisan election resentments, overspending, family tensions, consuming too many addictive treats, and this is all tied in a pretty ribbon that is labeled with COVID-19. It's really no wonder that so many of us are not motivated by the holidays this year or finishing 2020 strong with a bang, as I wanted to talk about. And we still can in certain ways, but Let's acknowledge where we are at this time and just check in and release some of the perfectionist attitudes that so many of us have, ha- of us have had and always have going into the holidays. Now, even our resilient ancestors may offer us some type of sympathy in today's climate, shall we say? I mean, maybe or maybe not. But on that, I try to remind myself that our own ancestors, my own ancestors, fled countries that not only were dangerous then, but are very dangerous today. And they were resilient and they got through many, many things, the unthinkable things. I think maybe we've been too spoiled and and things like that. But the truth is our ancestors were strong and so many today have survived. And we are of that breed. We are of those families. Please try to remind yourself that you have also been through tough times. I mean, in the past, it could be a breakup. It could be, you know, a divorce, a lost job, getting through some terrible disease, getting through some, some issues with, you know, friends and family. 
and yet you still made it through. And although this seems to be much more exacerbated and on a much higher level, just remember how strong you are and how resilient you are and what you've done in the past and how you've gotten through and that you're doing a wonderful job despite of the circumstances and despite of lack of resources or whatever you're working with. Now, I'm not downplaying anything as this has been one of the worst times in my life, hands down. I mean, just a quick synopsis from performing on that New Year's Eve stage in Las Vegas as a showgirl. I came back to Los Angeles where I live and I had just a plethora of film and television jobs lined up. And in this business, in this industry, as we are freelancers and also have agents and managers, it just feels really great because you know you put the work in, you knew you did the additions and you put the work in to, to be able to book these jobs. And they're not easy, they're not easy to come by. There's a lot of competition. So I was looking so forward to 2020 and had some awesome jobs lined up. I had some amaz- amazing hosting events lined up with major sports like the Super Bowl and the PGA and lots of modeling jobs. And I'm certainly not saying this to brag. It was just, it was just for me personally, I was very excited. And long story short, I find myself on a film rehearsal on an amazing incredible film project that would have been like working with some people that I adored in the film and television industry that were celebrities but like super talented and wonderful and I had a disastrous accident which is referred to as a catastrophic injury and I my life has never changed quite this drastically I mean from the fact that I I am an athletic person and I spend a lot of time, you know, as 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 an athlete, I I work out a lot. And part of my job is to stay in fantastic shape as a dancer and model and sometimes doing like little stunt work here and there. Um, And I just long story short, ended up in the hospital with emergency surgeries that thank God saved my life. I mean, I'm very, very lucky. But I also look at that, I mean, and I went into the hospital before COVID hit. So I was still in the emergency rooms in surgeries when cases started to come in. So this just goes to show how long ago. This was January 2020 when I had gotten back from Las Vegas into L.A. And two weeks in, I was there and Kobe, I had learned that Kobe Bryant died. I remember that I was like, I heard two male nurses outside the room talking about Kobe Bryant's death and I'm like what are you guys talking about that's I was in the hospital that long before this hit so my life had already sort of changed and I was looking forward to getting out of the hospital because it really was getting flooded with COVID cases and I wasn't really as familiar with it yet um that alone the fact that I did it all alone and then I went home and then you know I'm like oh well I can order Amazon Prime and get groceries while I have while I'm on crutches with two huge casts, I had a huge cast on my right leg and a huge cast on my left arm. And I'm talking cast from the like femur, f- from the bottom to the top and then bottom to the top on opposing limbs, left arm, right leg. So it was interesting. And I also have a very modern home where it's concrete floors and it's very like cold and don't touch anything because it looks cool. Well, that wasn't exactly uh, comfortable for, for the, uh, you know, getting better and I fell a couple times and then you know I could order Amazon Prime and have it delivered to my door and that was wonderful and then that stopped I couldn't even get delivery so I found myself figuring out a way to shop with all the casts and the cart and everything and it was quite challenging but with that I had a struggle there on top of which as a stress reliever being athletic I love to run I love to lift weights I specifically love to box So when I get agitated or angry or have a lot of stress in my life, that is my easy go-to. That to me is a drug. It's a mental health drug and I was not allowed, able to have that anymore. So I remember talking to my dad from the hospital room and he said, just number one, just keep squeezing the glutes. The the gluteus maximus, gluteus minimus, gluteus medius, the butt. So that the only thing I could move was my butt. (laughs) So I I would do butt squeezes all day because... It's like the one area I could move and, you know, it kind of kept me mentally sane. Now, although that sounds ridiculous, I lost something so huge in my life of being able to have that as a, as a go-to. And plus, you know, I kept my butt toned while in the hospital and I was there for a long time and then basically on my back for 11 months in this recovery. So 
it really changed my life. And I have such empathy and sympathy and it's made me, I think it's made me a better person. But I certainly don't take any of this away from you. Fast forward, my best friend in the entire world, my entire life has been my grandmother. I mean, I have great friends and I love everybody in my family, but my grandma was always my queen. She was the, she was everything to me. And I lost her in October and I wasn't able to see her. And that was really, really tough because she just, it was not COVID related, but because COVID was happening, it didn't allow for us to see her or touch her. Um, my mom and my uncle and my sister were able to through windows at the hospital, but I was not able to. And I guess the greatest gift that I was able to receive was I was the last person to talk to her. I talked to her every single day, um, always my entire life. And I was able to talk to her the day, the night before that she passed away. So to me, that was the biggest gift, but I take nothing for granted because I'm actually, I wouldn't even want to go home for Christmas this year. You know, we decided to change the plans because of traveling and then traveling was still with the, with the crutches and things like that. But quite selfishly, you know, I don't want to get people sick. I don't want to get anyone in my family sick um, just because I'm coming in from L.A. with different air and a lot of exposure. And although I've never had anything, certainly haven't had symptoms or anything of the kind, but I'm afraid to face I'm afraid to face it that, that I'm not going to be able to see her for our traditional <clears throat> Christmas holidays and things like that. So. But I was able to fly home for the funeral, and that was a blessing. Um, and our church allowed for that because she was a pretty upstanding person in the church. And her husband, my grandfather, uh, Dr. Nicholas Zube, was the deacon so of the Russian Orthodox Church. So we were able to have that, and that was a, that was a true blessing. And not one day goes by that I don't appreciate and and look at anything as a, and don't play anybody's situation because it's a hard Christmas. No matter what way we look at it, it's a very hard holiday, whether it be Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, whatever you say, um, it's the holiday season and it's a time for rejoicing and, you know, being with friends and family with, with the happiest of happiest, as they say, and it really isn't. But if we can find some silver linings and knowing that we're all here together, we're all in it, in it to win it, basically don't let 2020 beat us down because it's not, because we are strong and we are resilient and we will get through. And again, I just want Please know that I'm not downplaying any situation. But please remind yourself that you have coped with things in the past and you can get through previous hard times. And remind, how did you how did you get through your emotional ups and downs? What did you do? You probably maybe relied on friends and family. Do those things that you did before. Um, and just remember how strong and resilient you are. As we're heading back into this thick of the holiday season in two days and leading up, we have task lists projects and jobs that need to be completed by the end of this year and let alone two days which is Christmas day try to prioritize tries into bite-sized pieces with due dates and add what is needed to accomplish such deadlines divide and conquer and instead of being overwhelmed just make make a focus and allow for less mental stress just don't don't go there don't allow yourself for it because give yourself a break you're trying the best you can now another reminder of great things that came out of the out of the pandemic um we were able to slow down and spend time with our families in quarantine. Sometimes people would, certain parents would joke that, you know, my husband goes and plays hide and seek with kids and he hides and doesn't come back. <laughs> you know, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough out there. Even with great marriages that can turn a marriage on, on a dime. I mean, I know that there's a lot of divorce papers going through for 2021 and, you know, it's no wonder we're spending a lot of time at home when we're traveling usually or working. You know, I think that frontline workers, healthcare workers, and teachers have received the praise that they have always deserved. And that's, I'm so happy to see that because both of my parents um, are retired teachers. My dad moved on quickly because he couldn't take it and went under administration and other things. But uh, I thank God that they, they, are, they are being coveted for like, look at the Zoom schools and how hard they had to try. I mean, let's not even mention the frontline workers, the healthcare workers, the doctors, the the you know nurses the caretakers everybody it's just they are wonderful phenomenal people um people have become more active with fitness and getting outdoors and maybe taking control of their health because you know as you see it COVID-19 really hits a lot of populations and especially if you have type 2 diabetes which could be onset from 
from obesity. You know, a lot of, where our country has a lot of it, and and so does sort of the Brits, England. So our countries are showing higher numbers. So people are getting in shape and taking more control of their of their health. Um, and another great thing is many companies have changed to allow for equality. I mean, look at Crayola. They're making crayons where every child can actually represent themselves properly on paper with their skin color. It's not just salmon Caucasian anymore. It's everybody. And that's opened a lot of doors for you know African-American-owned businesses and putting a spotlight on them. Look at the endless creativity that, that has been done from alternative trick-or-treating practices and Zoom birthday parties that allowed for just the parents to, to show up and be stars and, and, and just how many how many givers. Like, look at some of these FedEx and, and UPS people that are just working overtime, USPS. It's amazing. Yes, there's a lot of, you know, hatred in the world, of course, but there's so many wonderful people. And how about the fact that we're bringing the old drive-in movies back into our lives and puzzles? I can't complete a puzzle to save my life. I'm way too ADHD, but people seem to enjoy it. Um... And then look at the speed at which Pfizer and Moderna were able to create vaccines in less than a year. And yes, no matter how cautionary this may be with allergic reactions and things like that, and the fact that other has, others have taken longer to produce, this is still beyond impressive. And look at how Dippin' Dots has shared their technology with um, Pfizer because of the, of the cold, of the way of, they have to cold, with cold storage because not a lot of places have that. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. And look at how many companies have turned their their factories maybe making cars into making masks or things with human shields that can help that can help healthcare workers and and everybody else so the way that humans have reacted shows we're pretty darn smart we're smart we're amazing and let's keep pushing ourselves together because we can beat 2020 at its own game and we deserve to have some spirit in the end of the season and so what are some few things what are a few things we can do to keep ourselves mentally in check during this time well, there are several. I've done a lot of research with different mental health facilities, um, different counselors, different schools, different um, rehab facilities, just to see how I can add beef up this podcast with some good, good things. Um, first of all, getting just moving. We feel better mentally when we're in better physical health. And when you're just kind of not feeling very great, use the HALT method. That is H-A-L-T. Change up your actions if you feel any of these things, hungry, or you can you can combine these two words, angry. You can just say hangry, lonely, and tired, and just use, use the HLT method. But again, hunger, being angry, lonely, and tired can really create havoc on your mind. So change it up a thing, a few you know a, a bit if you can. If you if you're hungry, get something to eat. If you're angry, go punch a bag. <laughs> lonely or tired, you know, reach out to a friend or take a nap. Try not to let go of your health fitness and nutrition goals you know that extra time turning down a much too zaddy zoom must much too chatty zoom call among friends that sometimes can get annoying may allow you an extra 30 minutes of resistance training or healthy meal prepping and completely throwing in the towel especially with all the holiday snacks and treats and wondrously delicious delicious chocolates will cause you to be angry and disappointed in yourself. So try to stay on track because it's like everyone has the New Year's resolutions and it's almost better to just kind of feel like you're going into 2021 with, you know, at least you had some kind of control. But if you don't and you feel better, eat the chocolate and, I, and don't judge yourself. Um, and continue these goals by finding, finding time for yourself, resting, getting ample sleep to wake up refreshed the next day. Remember that lack of sleep causes raised cortisol levels and that adds to weight gain, especially in the stomach area. You deserve your beauty and sanity rest. Perhaps wind down with a sappy holiday movie in the dark while the tree is glowing in the background with a cocktail. And what a great time to perhaps rekindle the potential loss of romance with a significant other while struggling together in quarantine. It's very romantic. And if they don't take the hint... Use a little mistletoe while offering a neck massage and, you know, get a little more aggressive. I mean, come on. <laughs> and then that will offer a good night's sleep. Now, during this time, too, this holiday season with the prep and everything else, acknowledge your feelings. If you're having a tough time with this, um, it, it, as I instead like to be there and strong for others, remind yourself that you have to put your own life jacket on first. You have to put your own oxygen mask on first on a plane. In, or, in order for you to take care of others or help other things or be able to even be able to be sane half the time. Now, 
I do not reach out to others and that is something that I'm working on because it's like, well, who am I? Am I just like some narcissist who doesn't need help? No, I have a hard time asking for help, which is like part of the reason why I'm doing this podcast this week to help myself. And I hope that I hope that I eventually do. Um, but do reach out to others for help and express how you actually feel. Allow your friends, family, neighbors to be there for you just as you would be for them. Even if it's just through a weekly text message message, or just, you know, a phone call or just whatever. Seek professional help with therapists, support groups, and virtual events. I mean, with these virtual, these virtual mental health types of things now with apps, you can remain anonymous and not run into anyone, not leave your, you don't have to leave your home. You can be as secretive as, po- as possible. So, and if you're us- utilizing online counseling platforms, that can really help. Um, I myself need to start doing that eventually. I'm also in a boat where I'm trying to get over the stigma and I'm trying to help my own self with that as I'm helping others potentially. Um, For me, I found that volunteering and donating and adding myself to volunteer organizations all the time immediately lifts my own spirits with helping others. And this year, there's a greater need than ever before. I can't physically do a lot of the volunteering where I used to, where I was able to in the past. I will get there again, but there's other things you can do, like sponsor families or, you know, add add money or gifts or, or donate to certain organizations. Even going to the grocery store. I mean, there's so many places, and even on Amazon, where you can donate, and some of the money goes to that. So there's plenty of opportunities, and it always, even if it's for selfish reasons, it makes you feel better and it helps others. Um, just this week, I, I check in on, on several people. I have a lot of friends that are addicts, and I check in on them, making sure they're, they're okay, especially during the holiday season. And I have several friends that are, you know, elderly. There's a couple up the block. That they're so sweet, and, and they do as much as they can. But I called, them on t- I called them yesterday to make sure that they had enough toilet paper. I mean, because that was something that still, that it's heavy to carry for them, and they, they don't get, they're too old-fashioned to get prime delivery and so I will often check in on them to see what I can do and that just makes it makes me feel better helping them so and then if you are going to see family relatives if you are going anywhere for the holidays and you've seen in the, in the past you've had horrible differences with family members try to set these differences aside I mean just to bring my sister and I growing up our entire lives we have been oil and water and I am talking the strongest of each how we grew up in the same household and from the same parents has been astounding to both of us all these years, including our parents. Like, they just don't understand how how we are just so different, except for this year. I mean, call it growing up or more like, well, I personally champion my sister for being the mature one because she has gone through seeking help, maybe from mental health, and I haven't, and figuring out how we can be civil and looking at our past and what have, why we are the way we are and so this year, more than ever before, I have to tell you that she has come through for me with this accident more than anybody else in the family because I think she understands a downfall and I appreciate her so much for it. And as long as she just continues to admit that I'm the smarter one and the one who is, is, the, is the better of the two because I'm the firstborn, we're going to be fine. No, I'm, I'm truly kidding. I'm truly kidding. Um, well, yes, I, I, I'm 90, 99.9% kidding, but she is extremely special to me, and my parents would flip for me to for me to know that I'm even saying that. But yeah, she's, and even her cat, I'm even beginning to learn to like her cat. So, Dimitri, cheers to you, and Mary McDaniel's, I love you if you're listening to this, which I know you're not, but I thank you. Um, so, if you do have differences in your family, try to set those aside because it, it, it's a it's, it's just not worth it sometimes when, when life becomes too short and maybe you've lost someone in the family and, and it just gets really hard, but put that aside and really try to appreciate and enjoy each other because, again, as we've known, life is very, very short, so appreciate them. Um, the next one, put perfection aside. The holiday season with the beautiful advertising and the countdowns and the sparkly images of beautiful memories of years past makes us romanticize these holidays with huge expectations and we expect ourselves to be perfect, have these perfect Christmas cards, these perfect spreads on the table, everything just glo- you know, glorious and everybody getting exactly what they want and coming in with their, the spouses that everybody would have picked out for them and maybe you're single, why are you not single? All these questions. And in the Hallmark movies sort of depict 
a different way, but although even the even Hallmark and Lifetime themselves are getting more realistic in what can happen with the holidays. So try to, you know, release these expectations. You are trying your absolute best with limited resources. So try to try not to let perfectionism within yourself or from others judge you. Don't judge yourself. Many of the usual family traditions that have been always there maybe have to be pushed for another year or maybe on a lesser level. Um, realize that we're very lucky to have one another. So remove those expectations and push through. I mean, perhaps as a child, perhaps you have a child in the family that was hoping for a certain gift under the tree. Maybe you can't even afford the gift, let alone the tree this year. Don't put that pressure on yourself. Your child knows that you love them and you're doing the best you can and avoid those expectations. You know, I myself, I'm kind of a selfish brat because I love our family traditions of Russian and Eastern European food, which I is my favorite cuisine. And just knowing, hearing about all of our, all of our ancestors coming in and what we've struggled with and, and eating that delicious Russian food, which I used to make fun of, we're not going to have to the same extent anymore because we're losing people in our family and those traditions but we are going to try and back to my sister she can make she can recreate it pretty damn well as can my mom so but I've always been like well why can't we have that well me myself put those perfections aside you know and don't don't expect that because we will have that again and appreciate the family members and, and appreciate the times that you did have that now next is sticking to an allocated budget you can downsize via homemade gifts, gift exchanges or donations and another person's name. If you forget a gift while you're, while you're getting ready to see the actual recipient, never fear. Use the OPITS method. Order online, pick it up at the store or via curbside. If it's a, you know, if it's a local store, just do the old fashioned calling ahead, reserving it and picking it up. Um, when in doubt, take a Doritos bag, clean it out or, or put it inside out, clean it, put a candle in there, and tie it with a ribbon. It makes for the most perfect little aluminum foil pretty package that I learned on both Reddit and TikTok. And get on TikTok, get on Reddit, figure those things out. You are resilient, you are creative. Um, but stick to an allocated budget. If it's, if it's out of your budget, don't feel guilty that you can't spend that money. Do it on planning ahead and doing it for the future. Um, and again, plan ahead with those task lists and watching the weather if you're traveling on road trips or travel getting certain supplies ahead of time and planning for things to go wrong. What are your emergency backups? If your flight gets canceled and you intend to drive with four kids, where are your road trip snacks and where are they now? Where are the iPads? Get that ready ahead of time. I don't have kids. I don't want to have that problem. <laughs> and I, I very much uh, respect those of you that, that plan ahead and have those just extremely organized road trips and the, and the kids come out happy and I, I admire that greatly. And Learn to say no. If you can't do it all, allowing yourself that extra time that can be used elsewhere. Hey, even for a massage to escape for a bit, don't feel guilty. Feel empowered by your choices. A lot of, a lot, there are a lot of Zoom invites where they're really disorganized and you just don't feel like sitting there for a half an hour giggling at things that you don't feel like laughing about at the time because you may have, someone may be sick in your family or you're really stressed out. Learn to say no. It's, it's a powerful thing and it gives you back your sanity. Use that time for yourself. And finally, practice gratitude. So many of us are so blessed and it's very important to find gratitude each day. I do it every day, 365 days a year. It's, I'm very grateful for the wonderful people in my life and this year specifically thankful for the doctors that, that are taking care of me, the wonderful doctors, surgeons, everybody in my corner. I truly feel very grateful for that. You know, and sometimes it's hard to find and it's even frankly hard to hear sometimes. Well, you know, you're going through a struggle. It's like, oh, it's, it's you know, it's, it's good to be practice gratitude and you don't really feel like practicing gratitude because you don't feel like you have anything to be grateful for, but you do. People care about you. They love you. They are there for you. Even if you think they don't, people will help, you know, and, and just, just know that there are awesome people. I'm, I'm also grateful for the awesome people that listen to this podcast. I've met so many wonderful people that have been listeners or friends of listeners that have come to me and maybe just got a great tip in fitness or health. And it just makes my day because I, I, I do love helping others. I do love sharing knowledge and, and learning, learning knowledge from all of you, but be grateful for 
your health if you do be grateful for the food that you do have if you can if you can give be grateful for the fact that you can give or that you know people do care or the fact that there are free resources that you can that you can lean on even if you need if you need food the fact that there are these you know food pantries and and in feeding america did a huge job this year of of donations um reach out for help gosh reach out to me i do anything to help you You can find me on twitter facebook social media email me I, i'm my contact information is on the podcast notes and everywhere else so you know i'm grateful for you and if you need help and you have no one else to turn to reach out to me i'm happy to do it um it, even if that's hard to find Maybe it's just as small as appreciating a song that came on the radio. Maybe it reminded you of a past romance or the laughter and eye rolls that come from watching a sappy movie or laughing with your kids at Buddy the Elf or, you know, making fun of others sometimes. It, it's it, You just you got to let yourself laugh and know that you're surrounded by people that love you and are there to support you because I know I am. And if you're alone for the holidays... Try to at least reach out to friends and family via Zoom or a Zoom FaceTime call to see their faces. If you don't feel like it, don't worry about it. Try to indulge yourself with a great book, movie, Chinese takeout, massage, whatever, just to make yourself feel better. And remember that next year will surely be better. If, if you know people that are alone, try to reach out to them. Bring them a little gift or send them an invite to join your group. Or just if, it's, if you're worried about social distancing, you know, offer to bring saran wrap dessert with a mask and drop it off at the doorstep as they will surely appreciate it i again i have several people that i always check in on for the holidays and i will definitely be calling all of them on christmas day and even if they don't pick up which sometimes they don't and i can just leave a voice text just telling them and assuring them that people are there for them and that i do care and i do love them at least it's one bright light you know and sometimes these times are very hard with people that are that are addicts especially it's a time of loneliness. It's a time of thinking that they did wrong in the past and they regretted actions and they haven't been able to get a grasp on it. Um, allow them to be human for a day and allow them to, if they need to, you know, partake. Just let, sometimes sometimes you have to let bygones be bygones for the day, even if it's some someone's struggling. It's just very, very difficult. And sometimes you just got to pick your battles. Um, and hey, if you want to indulge and you're, and you're on a huge fitness journey and you in, indulge in way too many uh, cakes and desserts, let yourself be human. This has been a very tough year. Job losses, restaurant closures, retail closures, corporate downsizing, all of these alone have affected so many people and it's not a laughing matter when you've had family members die or family members be sick or you can't even go home and see your family because you're a, careta- you're a caretaker in a huge hospital and you don't want to expose them. But there is help out there for everybody and it's going to get better because we are all resilient. Remember our ancestors or remember the fact that you have a chance to reinvent yourself if you've lost your job. As hard as it is, if you've lost your job, so many people are talking to me about the fact that, oh my gosh, I was finally able to quit a job, you know, or, or be, you know, let go of a job with a bit of a severance package or maybe not at all, but this will give me time to realize that I want to pursue my passions or a lot of people are leaving Los Angeles and going to the, to a place where they feel more secure or at home or maybe rekindling with a lost, you know, a long lost ex that they have always been in love with. There's just some really cool stories that have come out of it. So despite the horror of the roaring twenties that just seems to keep on roaring, like, it sounds like Limbiscuit. Um, keep on rolling, but it's keep on roaring. Let's not give up on ourselves. Don't give up on yourself. <clears throat> and let's allow ourselves to win in 2020 because we did the very best we could in the worst of times. I wish you all a beautiful holiday. Merry Christmas. And until my next podcast, a very happy new year. But reach out. I myself care about you immensely. I don't know many of you, but I do. And I just, I love people. I love the resiliency of people. I love the strength of people and just the beauty of what we can all offer to each other. So happy holidays and thank you for being great listeners. And again, this is Anne McDaniels, podcast host of So 